Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about essential keyboard shortcuts in Lightroom Classic and how to set up your workspace for maximum efficiency. Let's get going. Well, here we are in the library module. I'm using Classic version 8. Let's define our keyboard modifier keys before we go any further. If I say Command or Option, I'm referring to the Mac operating system. If I say Control or Alt, I'm referring to the Windows system. Incidentally, on non-USA Mac keyboards, there is an Alt key, not an Option key. But as most people who speak English that own Macs live in the USA, I will always say Option when referring to the Mac operating system. So if I say Command and Control, Alt or Option, Shift E, you'll understand what I'm saying. On a Mac, that will be Command, Option, Shift E. On a Windows system, Control, Alt, Shift E. I'm going to list some very obvious keyboard shortcuts, but I have to do it. G is for grid view in the library module, which we're in at the moment. E is for loop view. D is for develop. G for back to grid. Return, loop view. G back to grid. Spacebar, loop view. G back to grid. The next keyboard shortcuts are all about workspaces. F5 to turn on and off the module picker. F5 going now to turn it off. F6 to turn off the film strip or turn it back on. F7 to turn on and off the left hand side panel. F8 to turn off or on the right hand side panel. Tab to bring back the side panels or take them away. Shift and tab to bring all panels back or to take them all away. Shift and tab going again. T is for toolbar, which is there now. T to lose it, T to turn it back on. Backslash key, filter bar, gone, back. Command and control L to toggle the filters on or off. Command and control L going now, I've toggled on the filters. It doesn't need that filter bar to be on to do that. So if I turn it off by pressing backslash, command and control L, I've turned them off. Now I've turned them back on. There you go. Also, help search. If you can't find a command, let's say auto advance, you can just type it in there and literally just turn it on from there. If you can't remember a keyboard shortcut, command and control forward slash brings up the module keyboard shortcuts. Let's click on it to get rid of it. If you right click on any panel header, you can control what you see in that panel there. Importantly, I'm in solo mode. All my panels in solo mode, or right and left, and that means I can only have one panel open at one time. So the catalog's on now. If I click on Publish Services, catalog closes down and vice versa. Very useful. Only time there's an exception to that, if you're in the Develop module, D on my keyboard, inside a tool, M for graduated filter, it will obviously have the tool panel on and the other regular panel that you choose. G to go back to grid. You'll notice there's four arrow symbols here, all round, right and left, top and bottom. If you right click on one, according to Adobe, you can't right click on a Mac, it should be control click, but it works for me. So right click, I'm on manual. Auto hide and show works like this, mouse away, it goes away, come back, it's there. Right click, auto hide doesn't work very well. Mouse away, it hides. You have to press F7, let's say, to get it back. But when you go and play around with it and click away again, it doesn't auto hide. So right click, manual is the best one to be on. So you have to press F7, let's say, or go up to the menu. Sync with opposite panel just means if you make a change, let's say you picked manual in the right hand side panel, it would sync and change this one as well. That's all it means. So I don't have it on manual and all of them are on manual for me. So right click there. That's manual, right click there, that's manual as well. And the one above is also manual. The next one is F for full screen preview. Let's pick a better image. F will bring up full screen preview. It's not like the normal full screen. This is for previewing images, so F to lose it again. I'll just explain up here under window and screen mode, there's normal, which most of us will be on. I prefer to be on full screen. So my application menu is hidden and my dock on my Mac won't keep popping up all the time. Shift and F will cycle through them, but you don't get a lot of information on screen. So Shift F now 
Shift F again. I think the final one will put me into full screen mode. That means my application menu, I have to come up to get it on and I can't access or see my dock. It frightens some people, but personally, I don't have a problem with it because it gives you more screen real estate as well. So in summary for the library module, all panels should be in manual mode, side panels in solo mode, menu, screen mode, full screen for maximum screen real estate, T to hide or show the toolbar, backspace key to hide and show the filter bar, command or control L to toggle the filters on and off. So that's the workspace sorted out. What other keyboard shortcuts are useful in the library module? To make the grid smaller and larger, equals key or minus key. On some keyboards that'd be plus, but equals key going now, minus going now. I'm gonna go into loop view by pressing the space bar. That information there is controlled like this. Command or control J. I'm currently on info two, which is that one there. I can obviously change it to info one. Very straightforward, pick what you want. Grid view though, is a bit more complex. There's expanded and compact cells. Expanded cells, allow you to have more information. Compact cells, as it sounds, are more compact. This area here is common to both methods or both functions, but here's just for the compact cells and here is just for the expanded cells. It's worth playing around. It does confuse you at first, the difference between expanded and, and compact, but I just leave it on expanded 99% of the time. That's that off. Back to loop view, spacebar. I, on my keyboard, We'll cycle through them. So I'm going to overlay two or one, I can't remember. That would be one, that would be two, that is off. Back to the grid view, J on your keyboard will lose all the info overlays, J going again. The next thing is flagging, very straightforward. P to pick, X to reject, U to unflag. So I'm here on that one, U, I've unflagged it, simple as that. You've got to make sure you haven't got auto advance on sometimes. It is a bit of a pain. If it's on, if I tick it on now, I'm on that one there. If, let's say I rate it with one star, it moves to the next photograph straight away. I don't like it on, so photo auto advance off. Because I like to you know, flag and rate at the same time. So if I want to reject that, X on my keyboard, between one and five is for the stars, very straightforward. So one star there going now. I'm in compact view, how do I know that? Because I'm not seeing my star rating at the bottom. So expanded cells, you'll see the star rating at the bottom. The color labels, six for red, seven for yellow, eight for green, nine for blue. If you wanna give them meaning, go up to metadata, color label set, edit. I'm using my own ones at the moment. If you wanna stay with the Lightroom default, they're just colors basically, nothing, attached to them. Bridge default could be good if you work in bridge as well because it'll be exactly the same as you sort of move around between the two. Personally, I don't use color labels very much at all. The problem with, is with them, if you keep changing the meanings of them, what will happen is the photograph remembers the meaning uh, and keeps the color. So if you change them at a later date, it, it, it gets confusing. So very early doors, you need to make sure what you want for the colors. So it might be best just to stick with bridge default, so if you go to bridge, everything will be the same. Personally, I don't use color coding much. Also, six, seven, eight, nine, as I said, but for purple, you either have to come down here to the toolbar and pick it, or right click, it's even more awkward, find it, go down here, set color label, and pick it there. So none, I'm gonna have on that now. If you backspace, it will prompt you like this. Delete from disk, or remove. Remove from the catalog, keeps it on the disk, delete from disk, removes it from the catalog and deletes it from your system. If you've got some rejected ones, you've gone through, you've rejected some, command or control backspace, again, delete from disk or remove from the catalog. Don't forget one more time, delete from disk will also remove it from the catalog, cancel. Another good keyboard shortcut is command or control K and it puts you straight away into the keyword entry box. One problem, if you put something in like downs or something and press return, when you've finished, if you press return, it still stays in there. Be careful. So when you start doing keyboard shortcuts, it will fill up that area. Press escape or click away. I pressed escape. Lastly, it's not really a keyboard shortcut. Photo, stacking, 
auto stat by capture time, if you've been shooting in burst mode or exposure bracketing, you can set a time, let's say two seconds. So any two images that uh, have less than two seconds between them will be grouped. Right, let's go to the develop module, D on my keyboard. You should also check all your panels are set up for solo mode, etc., as well, and make sure they're on manual. So I know mine are. So when you go into any module now, if you've done it once, you won't have to do it again. Now, personally, I like to work like this. Shift and tab, and then bring back the right-hand side panel. And probably you lose the toolbar, so I've got maximum screen real estate to work. My normal route is crop, so R on my keyboard to crop, and then I do my crop first. That's just personal to me, so I'm going to close that down. White balance, I used to do it on import, the same for tone. Now we have profiles, it's changed things slightly. So if I want to do it automatically with keyboard shortcuts, let's say it's command or control, shift U or shift command or control U, whichever way around still works. So that would do an auto tone. So if that was on daylight, let's say, shift command or control U. For the tone, it's just command or control U and that's an auto tone. So I'll move that slider there. Command or control U will bring me back to auto. The reason I do it like this is because if you play with profiles, you always have to do an auto again. Now, these profiles have been created, some of them, with machine learning. And the auto tone now is driven by Adobe Sensei, as in Japanese teacher Sensei. And what that means is it is based on machine learning. So every time you change them, be careful, change it to something you like, and then do an auto. I don't like Adobe Landscape. I'm 99% of the time on Adobe Standard. But if I were to change it to Landscape, Auto, I would always do. Now it moves the Vibrance and Saturation sliders. I don't know about Dehaze, but definitely those two weren't moved before. And previous versions of Lightroom, they're moved now. I always put a bit of clarity on. Anyway, there is another way of using the white balance. W on your keyboard comes out like so. But notice if I put the toolbar on, T on my keyboard, I've got auto dismiss on. So if I click around, it puts it back into its holster. W again, if I turn off show loop, you won't see that loop around. And if I click again, it'll put it back in its holster. I'm just going to put it on auto, command or control, shift U or shift command or control U. And there you are, you're back on auto. Also, if you want to move these, notice you've got the hand symbol with a double headed arrow, you can drag like so. You can also click in there and use the up and down arrows. Shift up and down will move them in larger increments like so. So let's put it back on auto. This panel here, use the Ultra Option key pressed. With exposure and highlights, the background will be black. As you move the exposure up, anything in white indicates all three channels have been clipped. That's red, green, and blue. Yellow, for instance, says it's two colors, and the same for magenta as well. So I don't find it that useful, but some people do. Contrast doesn't work that way. Highlights, as I said, works in the same way. Shadows will have a white background as I bring the shadow slider down. Anything in black indicates three colors are being clipped, red, green, and blue. Anything in green, for instance, means the green uh, channel is being clipped, but anything in yellow is more than two colors. Yes, and it's the same for whites and blacks as well. Personally, I don't like that method. The other method is using the period or full stop key and the comma key. Press it now, you'll see something flash across the bottom of the screen. Modify clarity with the plus and minus key. So I'm pressing the comma key now, I'm moving up to temperature and I can use the plus and minus keys to move them. Shift or move them up in larger increments. So if I press the full stop or period key, I'm down to tint. You see it highlighted there, exposures highlighted, contrast. Quite useful, but the Photoshop method is the what's well, used by most Photoshop users. Hand symbol, drag left and right. But you've got more control using plus and minus keys or the up and down arrow keys, in my personal opinion. So that's one way of doing it as well. My preferred way to see any problems with my image, come up here, if you right click, is show clipping, and that's J on your keyboard. Anything that's blown out in the highlights will be red. Anything that's blown out in the shadows will be blue. So I'll bring that exposure slider down. You'll see a lot of blue. So anything in blue is shadows blown. That's my preferred method, J on your keyboard to turn it on and off. Make sure you turn it off because when you go down to sharpening, it causes your screen to go very funny. The tools. I mentioned R for crop, close. 
Q for the heel tool, M for the graduated filter tool, Shift and M for the radial filter tool, K for the adjustment brush. Zooming in and out in Lightroom is very problematic. I'm going to turn on the left-hand side panel, F7 going now. You have four choices, fit, fill, one-to-one, one, and four-to-one, which I've picked. So let's put it onto two-to-one. If I press my space bar and I'm outside of a tool, I can zoom in and out. When you're inside a tool, you can only use the Z or Z key. Space bar, I'm not going anywhere. Z or Z, I am. I'm going between fill and two to one because I've chosen that. By default, it's on fit and one to one. So normally it'll be like this. Z or Z, fit, one to one. That's the normal one unless you change it. So if I want to change that to two to one now, I'll click on two to one, Z or Z key going out between the two. And as I say, you can pick any zoom level you like. It is constrictive. It's not like Photoshop where you can you can have more granular control over the sliders or the zoom. Here you've got four states. In the preferences, Lightroom preferences or command comma or control comma, under interface, I've got zoom clicked point to center. What that means is this. If I click in that area there, I'm going to zoom into that area there because I've set two to one there. Press the space bar to come back out or the Z or Z key. Again, if I went over there, click there, I'll zoom in there. I can move it around as well, like so. Of course, the other one is command or control plus or minus or equals for some people because the plus key sometimes has equals on it. So command minus, I'm going back down to fit, command plus, fill, one to one and two to one. Quite straightforward. So the best things to take from this is command, comma. Make sure you've got that on. That is very useful, that zoom clicked point to center. And set up whatever you want, two to one or whatever there. And when you come in normally, it will be fit and one to one, so you don't have to worry. Try not to remember the space bar key because if you're inside at all, it doesn't work. So Z or Z, and then the other one, click to zoom in on an area, and then command or control, minus or plus to go back and forth. That's it guys. I hope you got something from this. Actually, before I go, one little heads up. Detail panel, sharpening, down from amount to masking and luminance. Hold the alter option key. You can see the grayscale mask because sharpening is all about luminance and it will catch up in a minute. We'll see the grayscale mask. And what it is, is it, the whiter it is, the more it's going to be affected. The darker it is, the less it's going to be affected by the sharpening. And then you can zoom in at one to one, which you should when you're sharpening and press the space bar or whatever to move it that across. And then I would then press the alt option key on the radius one and see if I'm creating halos, which are not good or not two big halos when I'm playing around this slider. And the same for the amount there. And it's the same for the lumen slider as well. Just a quick heads up before I go. That's it, guys. Thanks very much.